Hey everybody, so let's get started. So first things first, Shot Designer works as a canvas so you can, you know, pan around and pinch zoom and all the stuff that you know. But you have to actually tap objects to work with them. And if you tap them again, you get a menu. And you notice the plus sign here means that there's more in the menus. You can scroll inside the menu as well. If you tap outside the menu, it goes away. And then if you tap on the canvas itself, then it deselects completely. The only thing we do besides tapping is long pressing. So if I press and hold here, then it makes a copy, which you're going to use a lot. The next thing about objects is you can rotate them. So you get like a normal rotation handle. Um, but what's special here is that objects can have more than one rotation. So if I tap here, I can insert a turn after and then check this out. Now we have multiple rotations and the software draws the turn arrows by itself. And turns have their own settings too. So if I tap this one here, um, let me just move that over there. Then I can say turn back again. So you can see now the character turns over here and then he turns back again. Notice the little arrow. I can hide the turn, uh, which just means that we don't really care about turn number one. We're interested in a turn into position number two. Next, to make characters walk, I just tap them. And then in their menu, I have some options like walk to and walk from. So I'm going to select walk from. And then it's going to ask down here, walk from where? And I'm just going to tap right there. So now she walks from over here. And let's do the other part of that, too. I'm going to say walk to. And then she's going to walk over behind the red character. And let me just turn her into place. If I then select the walk arrow, then I can tap it again to get a menu where I can add a control point, which gives me a control point right there that I can then pull around to make more sophisticated paths. And there's another way to do that, which is just to press and hold the line right there. So that gave me another control point. Let me pull that over here. So now she's kind of drunk. So I'm going to press and hold this one to make it go away. And the same for the next one. Next, let's add some cameras. So there are basically two ways to add stuff to a scene. The first is use the plus sign menu down here. So let's tap that. And here you can add characters and cameras and props and set and lighting equipment. And you can also bring in a background image if your production designer has a drawing of the set that you can just block on top of it. And you get the same menu by just long pressing in any empty place on the canvas. And that's pretty much how I do it all the time. So let's add a camera. I tend to use green cameras for everything, but the multiple colors are so you can visually group shots that are part of the same function. So I'm going to position that here and rotate it into place. And then I'm going to press hold. And then I'm going to pull a copy that I'm going to put over here. And let's get rid of her mark over here. So I'm just going to tap it. There's the menu. And then I say delete. You do camera tracking the way that we just did walking, where you just select the camera and then you say track to or track from. So I'm going to say track from, and it says track from where, and I'm just going to tap right here and then rotate that into place. So what you have now is basically a move that goes like this, a converge or a counter into the over the shoulder. And you can keep adding to this move. So if I select this one and then I say track two, then I can just select an empty place on the track, doink. And then that's now mark number three. So it goes from one, two, and three. And let me undo that. Because I can also track to a spot outside the track. So I just again say track two, and then I tap right here. And there you go. So suddenly you have a, it extended the track. Now there's a thing to notice here, because since I did that in a straight line, the track is still just one segment. But if I track to a place that's much more at an angle, like uh, over here on the other side, then suddenly it turns into a curvy track. So that means you can pretty much do any kind of move that you can imagine. This is now turning into a steady cam move, or I can select the track also, and then I can deselect soft curve. So now it becomes straight track segment. So if I was working on a crab dolly, then I'd go from here to here, sit for a while, and then I track over here. You're really free in how you arrange cameras. So another thing I can do if I make a copy here, I can just drag a camera over and just drop it on here. And now it snaps to the track. So you can see now it's part of the track. But right now, the tracking doesn't stop at this camera. You can see that the arrow goes right past it. And that's because we haven't added a stop mark. And you do that from the camera's menu. So you can see we have no stop mark or one, two, three, four. So I'm going to select number two and then see what happens here. Now we go from one to number two. And then if I select this one, I can turn that into number three. And if I now go back and also set this one to be mark number four, then notice what's happening here now, because now we have a shot that goes from one to two to three to four. And that's about as complicated as you want to get on a dolly, because suddenly it starts to be hard to shoot it. But just because we can, let's turn this one into mark number five. 
Now, as diagrams get a little bigger, you're going to need the next feature, which is snapping. Because when you rearrange a diagram, after a while, it's going to drive you crazy that you have to rotate everything into place every time you come up with something. And we solved that in what I think is a really smart way. It centers around adding something called an axis line. And if I say axis line two and then axis line to this character, then this is a ye old 180 degree rule. And that's very good because it helps you understand what side of the line you're on. But what's clever now is that I can actually attach my cameras to this line. So I'm going to drag this one over there and let go and it jumps back and let's do the same thing over here. So I drag it over and let go. So check this out now, because as I move the characters around, the cameras actually keep their formation. That's pretty incredible. And the cameras also, they, they stick to the end of the line that we snap them to. So the camera behind here stays and over the shoulder no matter what we do. And actually, if you notice, even the characters keep looking at each other because of the axis line. So that really saves you a lot of work. So that's really all you need to get started. But let's talk about saving and loading. When a scene is open, it's open no matter what screen you're on. So don't worry about moving between screens. We just use back to the editor and then there's a home button right here. When you make a new scene, the scene is in an edit buffer. And so that means that when you're working on a scene for the first time, it's reminding you down here with a flashing floppy disk that you need to save it. And then you go back here to the main screen and then you can give it a proper name by you know, using the save dialog. But that doesn't mean that you're ever really in danger of losing anything because the edit buffer will stay until you overwrite the edit buffer by making another new scene. In a related feature that we have down here is called the scene freeze because you can save snapshots that you can return to. So I'm, I'm not going to give it a name right now, but if you look in the menu, it now says untitled freeze and let's make another freeze. So you don't ever have to start saving your scene under version one, version two, version three. You just make a scene freeze and then you try out a new idea.